Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cynical. So, as most of you guys should probably know, the finale of Kingdom Hearts Key is finally here. Earlier in the week, I uploaded a video explaining that the finale and final chapter of Kingdom Hearts Key will be releasing this week on the 25th of August. So, now it's finally here and the story progression for the end of Kingdom Hearts Key has been released. Now, as of right now, as of the time of me recording this video, the translations of the story progression and the different cutscenes for the finale are not out, meaning that we do have the screenshots, we've got some footage, but we don't actually have the translations, which essentially means that I don't actually know what any of the characters are saying in these cutscenes, so this video is just essentially going over the basic kind of concept of what's happening in these very final moments of Kingdom Hearts Key. Um, when the translations do come out, I will do a video explaining, uh, you know, like everything that is happening more in depth and we will get into a discussion. I'm sure that the translations are going to be coming out very soon. It might be that the translations come out an hour after this video is uploaded, two hours, three hours, four hours, but I'm sure that the translations are actually going to come out while I'm sleeping. It's currently 10 p.m. as of right now now so yeah however though, let's get into these screenshots so thanks to KH13 they've uploaded the screenshots of the final chapter of Kingdom Hearts key now in their description they say that in the update we immediately head straight to the battlefield where all wielders engage in combat we also find out more on the situation from the foretellers we find out Nightmare Cherithi's origins we're challenged to combat by the foretellers and we finally come to a long-awaited reunion with Ephemera and not with out a special surprise, a brief fully voiced line. Now this fully voiced line is actually Ephemera talking because Ephemera's voice actor, the Japanese voice actor, is actually revealed with inside of the rolling credits at the end of Kingdom Hearts Key. Now there's a lot of different screenshots to talk about. The very first one right here is the Key Blade Graveyard, a very familiar place. We can see all five foretellers, but you notice that four foretellers are actually standing in each of the different corners and right in the middle of the Key Blade Graveyard is Ava. Now for a very long time now it has been rumored that Ava is actually the traitor due to a lot of stuff going on with the dandelions. Then again though I'm not too sure if Ava is the traitor because you guys should remember that of course Ava confronted the sixth apprentice who is of course Luxu and she was actually questioning if Luxu is the traitor so it's a little bit of a confusing situation. In the final chapter we of course see a scene right here where Ava is actually having a conversation with Luxu, so it's going to be interesting to see the translations when they finally come out. So yeah, Ava's placement in this screenshot right here might not actually necessarily signify that she is a traitor, just more so that Square Enix had to put her there because there are five foretellers. But of course what you guys will notice is the little kind of Keyblade wielder silhouettes that you guys will see scattered all throughout the Keyblade graveyard is of course the different amount of Kingdom Hearts key players all assembling at the Keyblade graveyard to of course start the Keyblade War. Moving along, the player actually comes in contact with the Nightmare Cherithi again. Now like KH13 is explaining, we do find out about the Nightmare Cherithi's uh, origins, exactly what these origins are, we don't know as of right now, due to the fact that the translations are not out. What we do know is Nightmare Cherithi turns into this thing. What the hell is that? I mean, Nightmare Cherithi doesn't really look that scary, but when he turns into like this, Holy shit nipples. Like KH13 was explaining, you end up fighting all of the four tellers except for the four teller that you're part of the union with. So say for example, if I'm part of the Unicornus uh, Union, that means that I won't actually fight the Unicornus Foreteller, but I'll fight the rest of them. After this great battle, we see our player on the ground and they're dying. I know, it's a little bit depressing. We are then confronted by Scold and Ephemera, and we can notice that our player is actually crying as well. From this scene alone, we can really tell that there is something deep and meaningful going on. Now, I don't want to come up with any sort of theories yet until I actually see the translations for myself to know what Ephemera is talking about and the rest of the foretellers and whatnot. But one thing that I'm kind of leaning towards is you'll notice that the Keyblade graveyard in which the player is lying in once the battle between the four tellers is over, you'll notice that that Keyblade graveyard is like white. It almost leads me to believe that perhaps maybe the player has actually died and that they're in some sort of a realm which is similar to that of like heaven 
which could possibly mean that both Skald and Ephemera are also dead? Are they acting as like guardians or ghosts? I'm really not too sure. Now to the people who do understand Japanese and this is not what's actually going on, I do apologize because once again, translations have not come through, I don't read Japanese, so I don't exactly know what is actually going on. But however guys, that is the finale of Kingdom Hearts Key. Now what is still to come is a special episode, so like an extended little episode which is releasing on the 29th of August, which is actually next week. Not really too sure if this is going to progress the story anymore, but judging by the name of it and the fact that it's got a release date, I would say it's probably going to be doing that. Also, as a quick little bonus bit of news, in case you guys don't know, Beast's Castle is now a world in Unchained Key for the North American version. So if you guys are playing Unchained Key, you want a new world to go to, Beast's Castle is now available. So uh, if that's enough to kind of get you back into the game, if you've been taking a break, then that's really, really cool. Um, I've been taking a huge break from Unchained Key recently, and because Beast's Castle is now in there, it might just get me into the game again. Okay, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, and until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.